just put you on. Joan, chapter 1, and the 12 verse. The 12 verse tell us this. But as many as receive him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. What is that all about? John chapter 3, 16 verse. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. How many got the power? The Holy Ghost power. Why did you get it? But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. That simply means you get the power to live by God's word. That's why when Jesus was tempted in the wilderness, what he had to get? He had to get the power, the Holy Ghost. And guess what? As he being led into the wilderness, one thing the church needs to know, he was praying. Now, by him praying, the Holy Ghost had to come upon him. And praying, going in the wilderness. Look how he showed the power of the Holy Ghost. And guess what? It's in the world. To what? Man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out the mouth of God. I want you all to pay close attention to what's being said. The 14th verse of John chapter 1 tells us this, And the word was made flesh. And dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Now, come to understand. What is the Holy Ghost power? The Holy Ghost power is no more in the spirit of truth to tell you the truth about God's word. That's the power. And same for me, you got the power to live by, no matter what the devil tell you. You all better learn this. The Word and the Holy Ghost, you can't separate. Put it plainly. Why people could quote Scripture, could quote Scripture, what caused it to don't be of the Holy Ghost Father? Share this with you. It be a flesh. And let me show you what flesh is about. Romans chapter 8. It say this. The six verse starting there. Today verse 6. See, it look what it say. For to be carnally minded is death. But to be spiritual minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is intimate against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. Now, look what else I'm going to read to you. The sixth verse tells us, For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritual minded is life and peace. Don't you know the scripture let us know God is the God of peace? Don't you know the scriptures say God is not the author of confusion but of peace? Why God tell you this here for the church to be in a unity? You see? In the bound 
of the, the spirit in peace. You got to come to understand this. And you got to re realize this. Ephesians tell us, Ephesians chapter 4. Look at my reading. I therefore the prisoner the, uh, the Lord beseech you that ye walk worthy of the vacation where which ye are called with all loneliness and meekness with long suffering forbearing one another in love endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in a bond of peace there is one body and one spirit even as you are called in one hope of your calling why say in the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace well that's where I tell you in 1 Corinthians chapter 14 God is not the altar of confusion but of peace. Why is that being said in 1 Corinthians chapter 14? Paul was telling them on how the church is supposed to operate. He talked about how the prophets are supposed to do it. He talked about the women keep silence in the church. That's the bond of peace. The unity of the spirit. That guess what? One accord and we remind the same thing. That's what that's about. See? See? And the church needs to know this and come, come to realize it. You, in being a Christian, look what flesh do. The Christian. Okay? Look what the flesh do to Christian. <coughs> Psalms 120. Look. Psalms 120. Look what the flesh do the Spirit. Psalms 120, the seventh verse. It says, I am for peace, but when I speak, they are for war. Revelation chapter 12, 17 verse. Revelation chapter 12 to 17 verse. It put it plainly. <coughs> I want you all to come to understand what the Lord is saying unto you all. You better try to awaken people. Awaken. It's no game here. <coughs> what this says. No. And the dragon, Revelation chapter 12 to 17 verse, and the dragon was wrought with the woman and went to meet war. War. But the remnant of our seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Who are these people? Those that love God with all their heart, with all their soul, with all their mind, and with all their strength. And fulfill it. Love and thy neighbor, as I said. Wilderness experience. What Jesus had to do in the wilderness experience, he had to what? Move God to himself. And look, the devil offered him everything for him. And that's where he had to prove that he had loved God with all his heart, with all his soul, with all his mind, with all his strength. What was it all about? Jesus was put before the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. But it was. The lust with the flesh, the lust with the eyes, and to yield to the pride of life. What did he say? The flesh. Ain't you not there about right alone? But by every word that proceeded out the mouth of God. Eyes. Tempt in it. Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Open him everything, and you hear what he say? Fall down the wish. Say, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God and him only should thy serve. What did Jesus do? Jesus proved that he had loved the Father with all his mind, with all his heart, with all his soul. Look where his strength was. See, with all his strength. See, the scripture let us know after he had ended the fast. He remembered what the spirit of truth had told him. He remembered, thou art my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Look what the chapter did. Scripture let, let us know about him ending it fast. He could have ended. You know Jesus was, was that to come to do miracles? 
He said, if thou be the Son of God, turn those stones into bread. The Spirit of truth, by what? By him praying, the Spirit of truth brought him back to him. See, that's the important thing about praying. He said, my house should be called a house of prayer for all people. Check better learn that. And look at it. Tempt to say, if thou be the Son of God, turn these stones into bread. And what Jesus said, man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. See, come to learn this, and come to realize, flesh is for that. And you got to look at the Holy Spirit to crucify the flesh. See, what's wrong with too many people today? If you don't put your strength to hold loving God, don't come here saying that you love people and you don't put your strength to love God. Simply mean your world. The lust with the flesh, the lust with the eyes, and the body of life. If you don't overcome your world, you're not going to love thy neighbor as thyself. You're not going to fulfill it. Because guess what? You're going to be a liar to people. Because every time you're going to talk, you're going to speak for your game. And that's just like a murder. If you came riven in honor God with your strength, you're going to be weary, weary, weary in well-doing. In a way, Mama, I'm thankful. Because if you don't want to show your strength to the Lord, when the Lord says, I can do all things through Christ which strengthen me, me, me. Didn't say no one else but you. See, the Lord of your salvation and strength. See, that's why he say he's jealous, and that's why he say he's first. If you can't put your strength toward him and he say he doesn't give you the power to become sons of God, if you don't apply that word, what that power going to do? Because I learned this by the grace of God. Learn this here. Man, look, the devil quote the scripture. He quoted to Eve. But see, his spirit wasn't right. In interpreting. Quoting the scripture don't get you to heaven. If it did, many would be there. Knowing the scripture don't get you there. It's what it says gets you there. Because guess what? For the spirit of truth to tell you the truth, you got to be born again. You got to be converted. And guess what? Sin cannot be in your life. Why? Just simply as flesh cannot please God. And they're not subject to the law of God. Neither indeed can be. What flesh do? Walk against the spirit. Fight against the spirit. Pay attention. It's the reason it's being done. You all better come to realize this. You got to know whose side you own. Because Jesus said, if you're against it, you're going to scatter. See? I learned that. See? Righteous judgment, people. Quoting the scripture, not it. It takes the Holy Ghost for you to have righteous judgment. That's why the Lord said, if your brother be overtaken with a fault, you that are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness, lest thyself, you see, don't be tempted. You know you could have that knowledge that come from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And guess what you'd be? Your mind up would be accused of the brethren. Him being a minister, should. Or if it's doing that, it turning into accuser of the brethren. And no 
deep way down within yourself, you haven't come into putting all your strength in serving the Lord. See, you got to watch this. You can get strength to please yourself. That's me that I come shout. Fulfilling. Loving thy name as thyself. Because guess what? You want flesh strength to please yourself. And you don't want the strength that comes from God. Well, you say, I can do, I can do, I can do all, oh, all, oh, all, oh, all. Oh. It didn't say so. I can do all things. Let the weak say I'm strong. What you got to say? I'm strong. Well, it's true. Know in your salvation. Charity that covered a multitude of sins. Who are those that have charity that covered a multitude of sins? Them that have no bludgeon. Them that forgive. Them that show mercy. God, people, just listen to me, man. You got people, got houses. They live in. Got houses to live in. And look, I have grudged to certain people that come to the house. Don't want even something to come to the house. And they just don't know. And they tell you, God bless me with this. Yet you're showing grudges. No one won't give hospitality to them. You pick and choose who you want in your house. And yet you say, God bless me with it. Yeah, how the Lord put it, that's how many going to miss out. That's how many gonna miss out. It's nothing but grudge. Holding grudges, that's something mean you don't forgive, whatever happened. I only would go there because of that person. Other than that, I wouldn't go. You think God don't know that? Listen to me privately in what I'm saying, people. I just tell you this here, I only know what God wants me to know. One thing I do know, God is love. And you gotta let me know who God is. If it's not so, I let me talk. I just only speak on what he tells me. You gotta learn. You gotta learn this. Learn this. You hear what the Lord has said to me? He said, I have given you the keys. To the mystery of the kingdom of God. And look, If two people in the church bring up a conversation be saying and be pretending to God wouldn't this and that. Go to the pastor or go to the church. The one don't want to answer. Lock you up. Just a heater. Because guess what? 
If you're like that, you and that person don't want to serve God. And they're going to say you love people. If you love people, you will agree and do what the word of God says. You need to know. You call that you're not your brother people. That's what Cain said about it. Am I my brother keeper? What is a brother keeper? Want to get something so and so the person would so be saved. See, all this thing like what Jesus said is to make, make you see what you are. There's a lot of people going to miss out. I'm learning this. I told you. I don't know everything. I only speak what God gives me. That's all I do. That's all I know. Look what I'm going to read to you. Look what I'm going to read. Matthew chapter 10. And look what I'm going to share with you. Look what he's saying. I'm going to start off. After 25th verse. Right at 24. Matthew chapter 10, 23rd verse. So that, but when they persecute you in this city, flee ye into another. For very last time to thee, should not have, ye should not have gone over the cities of Israel that a son of man be cut. The disciple is not above his master, nor the servant above his Lord. Is it is enough for the disciple that he be as his master and the servant as his Lord? If they have called the master of the house be asked about it, how much more should they call them of his household? Fear them not therefore, for there is nothing, pay attention, cover, that should not be revealed and hid that should not be known. What I tell you in darkness, that speak ye in light, and what ye hear in the ear, that preach ye upon the housetop. And fear not them that wish it, which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him, which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Listen to that. So what he say? What I tell you in darkness, that speak ye in light, and what ye hear in the ear, that preach ye upon the housetop. He telling you you got to do that. He preaching. You see what could happen? Who shall I fear? Him that can cast both mind and soul in hell. So that means you got to preach it right. Who it is to fear God or oh, man. Don't that sound familiar what happened to Peter? Spirit of truth brought it back to her. Should we fear God or oh, man? Say fear God. Some people at a point would take that for himself. The word preaches in there. And other people say to him, say to him. Mind, the spirit of truth brought it back. That's why in you hearing, you have to hear it. Let's look up ahead. It's going to come your way. What this for you the example? 
See, the spirit of truth have doing to do with God's word. Okay? The Holy Spirit. Learn this. What the devil don't want you to know? The meaning of the word. He don't want you to know the interpretation of the word. He don't want you to know the Holy Spirit interpreting the word to you. He don't want you to know that. Because if he could get you to disobey the word, where the Holy Ghost going to come? Guess what's going to be coming? Iniquity going to set in. You're going to be good me. You know that. And you'll be quoting scripture of something way back in this and that of what you have heard about the spirit of truth. Look, he don't want you to know the meaning of the word, the interpretation of it. He don't want you to know that. He don't want you to know that. I want you to know that. I want you to know that. See, you got to watch with me. Oh, so and so know the word. The devil didn't know how to pull it. That was his knowledge. Huh. He look around to hear what God got to say. So he can say, no, like he told Eve, God do know. God do know. Got to be around. So he could make it an error. That's why the church got to come to realize coming to here. It's very important for you. Why I'm telling you this. Don't be one where this is safe, people. See? Don't turn. Do not turn into this. Okay? Don't, don't turn into this. Don't turn into that. I am for peace. But when I speak, they are for war. Don't turn into that. You hear what was said? When I'm for peace, they are for war. When? Let me share something about a prophet. The scripture says, whatever helps you abide in it. He says, so look at and let's see peace come to her. Look now, the same place where you at, guess what? If they don't want to receive that peace, they want to turn back into you. What does that mean? The word. The word got to be put in the midst of confusion. The word is the peace. That's the God of peace. See? Why? Listen to me, Brian. That's why the Lord said, five more men in the household. Two men straight, three men Come to understand this. Listen to my plan. Three. Okay, it's two, two, one, two, five, and I'm sorry. A man fool is going to be that of his look. Oh, I'm sorry. He said, I don't think that I've come to sin in peace. And he said, I saw it. What is that soul? The soul of the spirit, which is the word of God. 
And that's why it's going to be five in the household. Two against three, three against two. So it's all about people. And I hope the church comes to understand. Do people really want peace? I will keep the perfect peace of mind still. You see. You gotta learn that people. You got to learn that. You better try to awaken and learn that. You gotta learn that. The whole purpose of what's happening today. We need to awaken to what the Lord is saying unto us. Okay? But what's being said? Open ye the gates that the righteous nation which keep the truth may enter in. Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusted in thee. Trust ye in the Lord God, trust ye in the Lord forever, for in the Lord Jehovah is everlasting. Why they call him Jehovah? Has something to do with what he said, everlasting strength. That's what he used as mighty act, as Jehovah. That's why when Jesus was on the cross, and I'm not going to talk about that, he said, This man called for Elijah, this be Jehovah. So, you know, when he was going to yield it up, everything God created. You see what happened? So, that's what Jehovah is all about. That's why I say everlasting strength. Telling you the truth. It's the truth, people. I hope you all understand what the Lord is saying unto you all. Okay? Exodus chapter 6. And look what I'm going to just read. The first verse all the way to the third verse. The first verse. It says, The Lord said unto Moses, Now shall thou see what I will do to Pharaoh. For with a strong hand shall he let them go. And with a strong hand shall he drive them out of the land. And God spake unto Moses and said unto him, I am the Lord, and I appeared unto Abraham, unto Isaac, and unto Jacob by the name of God Almighty. But by my name, Jehovah, was I not known to them. That's what he means. Everlasting strength. Jehovah. It's my acts. So when you look at the, that being said in Acts, that's A-C, capital A-C-T-S. See, that's his mighty Acts. came with science happening. That's what it's all about. That's what Acts means. See, he ain't the word. But science happening. Everlasting strength. The church means. Got to realize it and come to know what's going on, people. This should not be of what's happening to people. Love God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. It's still a plan. What to use to tell the church? about loving our neighbor as ourselves, 
when they can't see, they're not putting their strength in the love of God to overcome their world. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. That's your world, eh? That's what's wrong. And the devil got the churches. I love my enemy. I love, and you can't tell, you ask them, say, well, what do you mean you love your enemy? You can't find it out in your scripture to come to understand. What is loving your enemy? Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. And pray for them that despise you. You should persecute you. That's why I listen. The church is so messed up. That's why people in the house go to home is so messed up. They talk it. But don't know what I mean. And if you get in darkness, getting blind to it, how could you walk in it? God is shine the light. The word of the truth. It's a simple things to get things straight. But when you have your state of mind, as it's written in your law, that ye are gods. You can't put nothing in the person. I see what you mean. I know what you're talking about, but you put nothing in. That's no more than a doing for the debate. It's that to mean you done told me all that, and guess what, really, I wasn't really paying attention to it, because I done made up my mind what I believed in. That's what that means. I don't see what you're talking about, brother. I don't understand. That's the same thing. You, listen, the Pharisees, chief priests, scribes, did Jesus. You're not supposed to be like that if you got the Holy Ghost. You should not be of the tradition and doctrine and commandment of men. If you got the Holy Ghost. What does that mean with you? Pride. That's what does that mean? And guess what? The Lord say, you resist he gave grace to the humble. The church is not humble. The church have gone away from the daily sacrifice of having a broken and contrite spirit. It's gone. A broken and contrite spirit. It's gone. That's what they have. God, look. See? It's not that you look with your head in the sky. It's just racist and the truth. It's just racist and the truth. The Lord said he hate that. And if you got a proud look, you're going to fulfill the abomination. This going on. You understand that? Look how the serpent talked to Eve. For Eve to talk to Adam. Why? To be a persecutor. Many people are persecuting righteousness and don't realize it. When you're going against the truth. Jesus is fully playing, going against it. Going against it. It's the true people. You think the people need to know now? On how to love one another and they have not gotten out their world in loving God. With all their heart, with all their soul, with all their mind, with all their strength, but the, the strength is gone. And guess what? If you don't do that part, you're going to be weary and well doing. And the Lord said, Be not weary and well doing. You're going to reap if you think not. See, this, these are scriptures the Lord given by the Holy Ghost. And guess what? These are the things the church overlooked. That's what it overlooked. 
So there's no mistaking why the Lord said unto the to the church that no man know when he gonna come. Because when the word get out, I think the, the word might be tomorrow. People gonna give up. They gonna be look, looking for him coming. I wanna make sure I'm, 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 I'm in the prayer, prayer thing and people got nothing to disturb me. That's why he don't wanna let you know when it is. Because that's when people go in another direction. And he got to do it that way. Because guess what? It wind up causing a lot of people to be discouraged. Oh, you're supposed to come on this day, or uh, this month, or uh, this year. And guess what? It don't happen. There you go. A lot of people are <coughs> turn. Look, away from God. You see why he don't want us to know? Some say, I'll wait till the last month. That's how so many people got tricks and tricked in the seventy. I want to be used to this last time of what the Lord's going to do. I want to be using that. That's why they got tricked. And when they didn't show up on that time of that, guess what? The fellows were See? I thought, I thought. You see why he don't want to let you know when he's coming? Right now, people are getting in because I, I think it's at the door, at the doing of the door, not the door. I think it done got in, and y'all just don't know that the door done been open. And the Lord said, <laughs> at the door. And people going to talk to you like, guess what, the door open, and he in or she in. You see? And he said, they're at the door. And you got to watch that. But guess what? That'll make you miss out on your day by day living, serving God. And guess what? Everything else going about its way, what it doing. And you can't enjoy that moment on this earth. Just let your light shine. See? So I thank the Lord for letting us know in this word about no one knows. I'm glad he let us do that. Because man would have you to think it's tomorrow. They got some good talk that they make you think it's tonight. It's facts. And I hope you all will come to understand. God is for peace. That's why Jesus had to share. He saved my kingdom. It's not of this world. If my kingdom was of this world, my servant would fight. You got too many people storing up with a religion, believing, guess what? He won't fight, won't make war. And what a sad thing about it, Jeremiah, I tell you, they steal my word. See, the church got to come to realize it. The Jews, he said, he came unto his own, and his own received him not. not. You see? Now that's why the Lord said, call his name Emmanuel. See, Emmanuel, God with us, that's the God of peace. The God of peace that brought again from the dead, our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, I'm going to read it for you all to understand thee. Working in us, which is well pleased in his sight with Jesus Christ. But I would like to read it. The God of peace. And we better wake up. We better wake up. Now the God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus. That great shepherd of the sheep through the blood of the everlasting covenant. Make you perfect in every good work to do his will. Working in you that which is well pleasing in his sight. Through Jesus Christ to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. That's Hebrews chapter 13. Reading that part in it. I hope you all come to understand. See. Uh, so that's why 
David said that. See? See? That's why David said that. See? David said this in Psalms 120. So, I expect in giving the truth, the doctrine of Jesus Christ, I just as well abrace myself with these kind of people that love erring in God's word. Psalms 120 and the seven verse. I am for peace, but when I speak, they are for war. So in me giving you the truth, see, concerning the commandments, I'm going to just tell you what the Lord say about it. And I'm going to read it in the 17th verse. And the dragon, which is the persecutor, and the dragon was wrought with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of our seed which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Testimony of Jesus Christ is the spirit of prophecy. And that's what the church got to come to understand in what he's saying unto us. Learn this, people. So, don't be on the wall side. See, and that's what the Lord shared with us about Armageddon. The kings of the earth. See, the beast, the false prophet, and the army. So I hope you all understand. I'm not going any farther with that part, but I hope you all understand what the Lord is saying unto the church. Okay? I hope you all understand. Now look at it. And the sixth angel pulled out his vial upon the great river of Euphrates, and the water there was dried up. It dried up, that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. And, there, and I saw three unclean spirits, like frogs, come out of the mouth of the dragon, and out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. For they are spirit of devils working miracles, which go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world, to gather them to the battle of the great day of God Almighty. Look what Jesus said unto the church. Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garment, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. What does that mean? Well, in Exodus chapter 20, the Lord tell your body, you showing your nakedness. That second mean that sin. You go to Genesis chapter 3 and tell you where Adam said, I knew I was naked. So nakedness means sin. So what the Lord trying to get us to see, what he's saying to the church, all this has been prepared. It's happening now. The Lord said he doesn't even care about the sins. Things going on with Jerusalem, being prepared. You see? And look what it's saying, to gather them together into a place called in the Hebrew tongue, I'm a gathering. So I hope the church comes to understand what the Lord is saying. I hope you all <laughs> see. And that's what the Lord shared with us about Armageddon. The kings of the earth. See, the beast, the false prophet, and the army. See. So I hope you all understand. I'm not going any farther with that part, but I hope you all understand what the Lord is saying unto the church. Okay? I hope you all understand. And look at it. And the sixth angel pulled out his vial upon the great river of Euphrates, and the water there was dried up. It dried up that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. And, there, and I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon and out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophet. For they are spirit 
of devils working miracles which go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of the great day of God Almighty. Look what Jesus say unto the church. Behold, I come as a thief. Blesses he that watcheth and keepeth his garment, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. What does that mean? Well, in Exodus chapter 20, the Lord tell you about him, you showing your nakedness. That's that to mean that sin. You go to Genesis chapter 3 and tell you where Adam say, I knew I was naked. So nakedness means sin. So what the Lord trying to get us to see, what he's saying to the church, all this done been prepared. It's happening now. The Lord said he doesn't even care about the sins. Things going on with Jerusalem, be prepared. You see? And look what it's saying, to gather them together into a place called in the Hebrew tongue, I'm a gathering. You see? So I hope the church comes to understand what the Lord's saying. I hope you all <laughs> that when the Lord speak to you, you don't be for walk. Okay? Amen.